thank you so much for joining us. We're here today talking to my friend, Melissa Oliveri. Melissa is the creator, writer, host, producer of the Skylark, Skylark Bell podcast. Oh, and she also composes a new song for each episode. She also wrote the gorgeous theme song for my sister podcast, Collected Sounds. And in Bolstead Land, you'll hear her song, The Velvets in Between Sections. But we're here today because if not for Melissa, Bolstead Land would not even exist. <laughs> hey, Melissa. Hi. <laughs> so you have an interesting story that sparked this whole thing. I, I do. I do. Um, should I just jump right in? Sure. Okay. So several years ago now, um, my husband is a realtor and I work with him and we were helping our friend <laughs> sell their house. And um, this was a beautiful Victorian, three-story Victorian house in uptown Minneapolis. And um, I suppose I should backtrack and explain that throughout my life, I've had a few instances where I'll experience things that I can't really explain. And some of the time those things kind of come back around and get confirmed. And so this was one of those moments. Um, we were hosting an open house and between groups of people who were looking at the house, uh, we were just sitting in the living room, my husband and I quietly, you know, on our phones. And um, so there was no one else in the house. And suddenly at the other end of the room, I kind of felt or in my mind saw a man standing at the other end of the room looking at the fireplace that was across from me. And he was dressed in, my guess was at the time 1920s type of attire. And um, I just kind of let it sit for a minute. And then in my mind, I started thinking, oh, what's your name? And uh, I got in my mind again, um, Jim Cam. <laughs> And I thought, well, I, that's okay. And then all of a sudden I thought, oh, like Jim Cameron, the filmmaker. Okay, now I'm just making stuff up. So I kind of let it go, but I could hear also in my mind always, um, like a ragtime piano type music and clinking drinkware and laughing women. And it felt kind of like a party, uh, but in my gut, I felt like it was more of a commercial situation, like a, like almost like a bar, um, which the house was not. And so I thought that was a little odd too. But again, you know, I, I have a vivid imagination. And so I chalked it up to that. Um, and then people came in to look at the house. So, you know, that kind of dispelled everything. Um, and when the, you know, we had a few more groups and then we were shutting down the house for the end of our open house. And my husband went and turned off the lights on the second and third floors and I took care of the basement and then the main floor. And when I got to the dining room, uh, the dining room had some wood paneling on the like, bottom third maybe of the walls. And I just had this instinct to bend down and place my hands on that wood paneling and kind of feel around almost like I thought I could maybe find a secret compartment. Um, and while I was doing that, crouched low to the ground, I felt Jim Cam, <laughs> I thought, um, kind of behind me say, he kind of whispered, we're bootleggers. And he kind of whispered it. it, it the tone was, he, he was proud of how good he was at what he does. It was almost like, you're not going to find anything. You know, I know what I'm doing, and like, who do you think you are, Missy? You're not going to find anything. Not mean, but just that kind of a, you know, really confident. You froze up. That happened. And okay. now, still, I thought I'm probably imagining this. Um, and eventually, as we were driving home, I started looking on my phone and trying to find out more about, you know, Minneapolis, 1920s, bootleggers, prohibition. And the first was uh, the name Kid Can with two N's, which, you know, if you look at it, 
um, mm -hmm. written out, Jim Cam and Kid Can with two N's are pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. I could see if we were a hundred years apart through time, how that <laughs> miscommunication might have happened. And uh, and sure enough, as everyone listening to Volstead Land knows, um, he was around back in that day, and he, I'm sure, was a very confident man. <laughs> and I'm sure he um, would have been around clinking drinkware and laughing women quite often and parties and in speakeasies and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's that that was quite a, a shock when uh, when I found that information, you know, mere hours after experiencing that in that house. So right. none of it was scary. I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel like he was threatening in any way and obviously long departed but you know sometimes people's energy can be intimidating I didn't mm -hmm. feel that I'm not saying he was a nice guy I'm just saying <laughs> I didn't feel that in that house um but it was <laughs> but it, it was it was really interesting and it and I learned you know a little more about him and, and the history of Minneapolis in that time and I'm so glad that you're doing this podcast to uh expand on that thanks yeah and the other thing too is that our house was only a block and a half away from the temple, the Temple Israel. Correct. It was Jewish. Yeah. And there's lots of stories about there being tunnels between the temple and some of the houses around there. Mm. I don't know that there was one in Interesting. our house. Interesting. But it's, you know, it's possible. Yeah. But that's just one more reason it really could have, he really could have been in, in our house at some point, you know, back in Right. The it felt likely yeah yeah just the geographically and like you say with the temple there and and the house had been i think like a, a boarding house yep. right at some yep. point or something of that nature and yep. so you know it's not unheard of that there might have been some type of speakeasy in there at some yeah. point too which is what i more felt it felt more like that than just a party or a dinner party yeah it felt uh, yeah a little more, more like unhinged maybe. transaction <laughs> yeah Yes, it did. It it felt it felt like business. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. just my my gut. There was nothing to indicate that, but Right. I mean, maybe it was a Tupperware it, party. Like at the time. Yeah, <laughs> we were weird, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had seen in that in that same dining room, I right after we moved in, I saw a full body apparition. Uh it I couldn't really make out what they were wearing or anything. It kind of looked like long-sleeved long pants kind of flowy pants like a tunic and long pants mm. and um, it was only for a second and you know they were posing in a certain way and I had mentioned it to one of my neighbors and she said oh I bet that was one of the guys that worked the 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 field back when it was a rooming house so oh wow you know there's there was I saw a lot of things in that house too. it's you know so there was some activity in that house it doesn't surprise me at all yeah. that you know that you saw something like that so that's cool yeah. yeah yeah it is cool i know i love it now i wish we were still there <laughs> i know i know it it was a phenomenal house there were a lot of cool yeah yeah i yeah. bet somebody like if somebody renovates it in some way they're gonna find well they're gonna find some compartment in the dining room i think yeah. <laughs> but they'll probably find you know, uh, it, I'm sure there are little hidey holes in places that we don't know about yet, you know? I'm sure. Well, there was actually um, the stairs going up to the third floor. You know, they're mm -hmm. really, really steep. And like, yeah, there's up, you could lift up the top of the, like the, what do you call this part of the stair? The part you walk on, you could lift that up the, and the, you could store yeah. stuff underneath. So it, they, maybe there oh, was stuff in there. There was nothing in there when we moved in. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, it would have been fun to find a bunch of money or something. <laughs> I know. I kept thinking, where there's so many nooks and crannies yeah. in this house. There's all these pa paintings oh, on the yeah. wall and stuff. I kept thinking, all we have to do is like rip open the back, and there's going to be money inside. But no. oh, yeah, <laughs> no luck. Not yet. <laughs> we oh, still have some of the somebody cleaned it out before you. <laughs> yeah. Well, a realtor that yeah, oh, cool. we bought the house from she took a whole bunch of the paintings and stuff but she wasn't supposed to it was supposed to be oh. included and when we came oh. in for the walk through the day at yeah. the closing we were like huh there's a lot of stuff gone 
And the owner was like, oh, I'll tell uh, her to come back if you want. But we didn't, we didn't fight it. So we just let her have it. No big deal. Yeah. I was more excited um, about the house than anything else. For sure. Yeah. Well, maybe she's being haunted now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe the there's haunting in the painting that she stole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the so owner the said eyes they, will follow around. Yeah, <laughs> those creepy pictures. The uh, the owners <laughs> told me later that they went to her house for dinner after the closing, and they saw their artwork on her walls, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, that's bizarre." No, that's pretty. Pretty. That's very crazy. strange. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. I wouldn't have the guts yeah. to do that. Huh? No. No. I mean, I would ask if I was interested, yeah. but I wouldn't just take it. That's weird. <laughs> I think she just thought we wouldn't even notice, you know? Yeah. Huh. Whatever. We did, for the record. <laughs> yeah. Missy. Um, so <laughs> how it, are you, you're, are you close to the end now of the Skylark Bell being recorded? And it's getting yeah one, i've recorded is. now everything okay. yes of book one yep there are two more books coming but uh, i've recorded all of the first season mm -hmm. and uh, it's not all mixed and sound effects and all that yet but it's recorded so yeah it should be it should be ready to go pretty soon and then i get to kick back a little bit yeah uh, until season two yeah. so yeah it's exciting and then i mapped out season two on a calendar and the second book is quite a bit longer than the first book. It's probably 20,000 words longer. Oh. Um, and so season two was going to take up the entire year, every single Friday. And um, that might be a little much. So yeah. I'm thinking I'll let people binge the beginning of season two with like five or six episodes mm -hmm. and then go from there. So we'll yeah. see. But yeah, it's good. rolling. It's exciting. That is exciting. I love yeah. it. I love it. Good. <laughs> Well, um, oh, and also, are you also looking into making the Skylark Bell an actual book in book form that people can buy and hold and read? I am, uh, yes, 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 I am. I'm, I'm waiting to finish the third book, okay. um, which is mostly done. I'm, it's, oh. it's kicking my butt a little bit, but it's getting close. And uh, once that one is done, I'm going to review everything because they, they really work together and I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. Um, but there are scenes that replicate through the three books and I want to make sure that I don't have any mistakes. And so um, I'm waiting to have all three finished and then, yeah, I'm going to look into into getting them published in book form, whether that's ebook or, or physical right. book. Right. Awesome. Uh, that's yeah, that'll be exciting too. Yeah, I'm excited. For and that. audiobook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Cool. And Thank what's you. your shirt? Thank Ghost you. Stories? And on your side, oh, my your shirt? shirt. Oh, my shirt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh. funny. Look at yeah. this. It's, um, what does it say? It says, Ghost Stories, Who Needs to Sleep? And it's got <laughs> Snoopy on it. Oh. You know, reading a, reading a spooky book. Yep. <laughs> That's really cute. I love it. I think you posted that on. Instagram or Facebook or something. I and it. I looked at it and I went, oh, I have to share this with Melissa. I and think I, was I like, did. <laughs> Melissa's the one that posted it. Okay. That is Melissa. You know me so well. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, it's a good, it's a good t-shirt to wear to talk about spooky things. <laughs> For sure. For sure. That was the story. I'm excited about your Patreon. Yeah. I just saw that you I joined. A, Thank I, you. I, I, I joined right before hopping on uh, on this call, and then I so I haven't had time to look at it yet. But I'm excited to dig through a little bit. So well, I I shared everything with public for the beginning because I didn't have any patrons, so I wanted to have something sure. up there for people who are yeah, that following. makes sense. And then um yeah, and then I'll start definitely. making some stuff that's a little more secret or, or you know whatever. So yeah. like the videos that I make. Yeah, no, Patreon is cool. Yeah. Um. The videos that I'm making that go along with the episodes, I'm just doing like a, a slideshow kind of to go along with, like I'm putting okay. up some of the newspaper articles and some photos and stuff like that as, you know, as a slideshow. And those I'm posting cool. and I'm, I'm sharing the link with everybody, but you can't see it if you don't have the link. So that's kind of an extra. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, very cool. Yeah. All right. Fun. Well, 
thanks for joining me today. Great. And it was good to well, see you yeah. again. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to get together in real, real space pretty oh. soon. Yes. Yes, definitely. All right. Now that we can. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Right. Well, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.